Thank you so much for the great panelists and this very interesting discussion around the potential of social enterprises to generate um, to create income generating opportunities and contribute to sustainable development. Thank you once more. Next, we will have an intimate fire chat between Carolina Valenchica, and I hope I said that right, Carolina, Vice President of Social Impact at BlackRock, and Mariana Costa, CEO and founder of Laboratoria, one of BlackRock grantees. They will be discussing their in different through their different perspective and lenses, challenges and opportunities for upskilling the global workforce through their work. You will gain insights into their specific work and that funder and grantee perspective. This discussion will also address how Laboratoria and BlackRock are navigating global shocks such as COVID-19. So let me introduce them briefly. Carolina has more than a decade of strategic grant making and advocacy experience. As a vice president of social impact at BlackRock, she manages the economic mobility grant portfolio and oversees um, operations for the global grant making and employee platforms. Carolina holds an MPA in development practice from Columbia University and a Master of Arts in English Studies and Literature from the Catholic University of Lublin in Poland. Mariana is a co-founder and CEO of Laboratoria, an organization that trains women from underserved backgrounds as software developers and connects them to companies in need of their talent. She has received multiple recognitions from her work, including being named one of Peru's leading innovators by the MIT and one of the world's most influential women by the BBC. She holds a uh, bachelor's in international relations from the London School of Economics and master's degree in public administration in development practice from Columbia University. I am personally very excited about this fireside chat because they're both graduated from the MPA in development practice program at Columbia University, which I'm an alumni myself. This program is also an academic partner for this event, so we want to give them a huge thank you for their continued support. Without further to say, let's let me pass it over to Carolina. Over to you, Caro, and welcome. Thank you for the introduction, Mariela. It is a pleasure to be here today. My name is Carolina Valencic, and I'm a Vice President of Social Impact at BlackRock. Social Impact at BlackRock seeks to help advance more inclusive and sustainable, sustainable economy. And in my role, I manage a portfolio of grants focused on job access as a pathway for economic mobility. BlackRock has been supporting a Laboratoria since 2017, and from day one, Mariana, you, you know very well, we've been impressed with the outcomes that your uh, organization uh, is achieving and the impact you have on the lives of all of your students and the special focus that you put into building a community of, of women. It has been great to see how your organization has grown from 2017 until this year. And earlier this year, we actually connected to discuss Laboratoria, to discuss the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on, on your organization. This is something that we did with each of our grantees because we believe it's very important to understand the challenges and uh, opportunities that our uh, grantees are facing and to also know what we as a funder can do to support you through this uh, transition. I would like to go back to the conversation about COVID-19 and how it has impacted Laboratoria and how it has impacted your model, perhaps. But before we do that, I think it would be very helpful if you could tell us a little bit more about the history of Laboratoria, what really initiated the idea and uh, what do you seek to accomplish? Yes, thank you so much, Carolina. It's a pleasure uh, to be here. Um, and, and it's been a pleasure to work with BlackRock over the past few years uh, as, as we've grown. So Laboratoria was born as an idea um, almost seven years ago. So it's been a long time. Um, my my co-founders and I, we moved to, to Peru after living for, for many years abroad. And we actually started a, a, a software company, a digital agency to go and build websites for clients. Uh, and while doing that, we faced the challenge of growing our own team of software developers. And we realized that it was actually really hard to find uh, software developers back then in Lima. There was growing demand for this, for this, this, this profile and just there weren't enough. So that was an opportunity. The second thing that was really interesting is that the world of software, I think, is probably one of the first spaces that has understood that really skills are more important than degrees. It's really about the skill set that you have. And we realized that many of the people in our team had no official degree, 
but they were building a great career. And that for me was like, this is amazing. It's like a loophole in the system. And it, it's a path to actually build a really inclusive industry. And the third thing, obviously, is that there were really like very, very few women in the space. It was almost impossible. Our team grew, we had 15 people and no women. So we said, okay, this is interesting. We have a space, a market space that has huge demand for talent. It's very flexible. So you can get in people that don't necessarily have a degree and it desperately needs women. And if, if we look at the other side of the equation, what are young women doing in Latin America? Unfortunately, as I always say, uh, we are just missing a huge opportunity because of so much talent that it's untapped just because of the lack of opportunity. You know, women are really underrepresented in the labor market. They're overrepresented in spaces in the labor market that are less skilled. Um, so, so we said, okay, he, this is it. You know, let's build something here. And, and that's how the idea was born. What is laboratory experience? Like what is what is your model? How how does a woman go through your door and what, what, what does she then participate in? Yes, yeah, so we start now with a call for applicants and a, an admissions process where we're looking for women that haven't been able to start a professional career yet. So they're either not working or they're working a very a low skilled job that has a very low ceiling and and have the talent and potential and the will to do more. You know? So we look more for potential than prior experience. Those that get admitted to the program um, go through a six month immersive bootcamp. It's, it's a full time bootcamp that, that not only seeks to, to, to help them build technical skills as front end developers or UX designers, but that also has a huge focus on uh, life skills, work skills, the, the soft skills that are really the hardest ones to, to build, but the most important ones to have. Um, we, we've designed our program in a way that really replicates the experience of working uh, in the software industry. You know? I think that that's the most important part. We've actually engaged companies to be part of that design from the get-go so that we can make sure that in six months, our students are ready to go out and add value in a company. Uh, and I think it's also a very communal experience. There's a very strong element of community. Uh, we have around 500 students a year that are there together, all of them pursuing the same dream that it's not really just, oh, you know, I, I, I will learn some code and, and that's cool. It's really about changing their, their lives, changing their futures, you no, know, and using technology to transform their futures for the better. Uh, and then once they go out, they start working and uh, we have a placement rate of over 80 percent. Sometimes it's we've even had some cohorts where we, where we place 90, 95 percent of our graduates and um, they on average nearly triple their income. So there's a significant increase there. Uh, and they, they join this vibrant community of almost 2000 women now that are out there that have this, this strong uh, will to open more opportunities for more women in tech and that are through their own leadership, through their contribution to their companies, through what they're doing in their communities. I think they're really transforming not only the tech sector for the better, but eventually I, I hope that our region for the better. Well, we definitely can see it already happen. And uh, as you talk about how you have grown and you have grown so much since since you started. Uh, what have been perhaps some of the lessons that you learned in how you work with employers? Did you have to go through some kind of uh, attitude shift with them? Like, did you have to do a lot of explaining that uh, your your graduates are really good candidates for the jobs that they're, they are seeking to fill? Yes, uh, so at the beginning, uh, our first employers, I think, were the more flexible companies, the ones that fell in love with the idea and that, you know, their processes could be shifted around easily. So we had many startups, many digital agencies, smaller companies. As we started having more traction, we started reaching out to the big companies, not to the big banks, the big retailers, insurance companies, the government. 
And it's, it's been really interesting to see because on those early days, many of these big corporates were like, oh, but I really need a degree, you know? Sorry, that's part of my process. I need some someone with a five-year university degree. Um, but with time, they started changing that. So they were like, okay, I'll take part in an event. And they participated in one of our placement hackathons. And then they were, okay, I'll, I'll do anything that I can to change whatever I need to change because I really want this type of talent. It's fresh, you know, it's different from what I have and that's, that also implies value. We make sure that our students really are, they, they learn in a way where they start leaving the, the, the agile values from the first day. So they're used to being very proactive, giving feedback, collaborating well. So I think that our, our bet was let's, just make sure that we can be the best program out there, uh, that the best place to find junior tech talent. And that's how we'll convince companies and, and that's how it happens. So now we have every sort of company in every industry, you know, from digital to mining, uh, hiring talent from Laboratoria. And, and that's really exciting to see because those companies are now better equipped to build more diverse and inclusive teams from the get-go. And one last thing that I love is that in our first, I would say, two years, really a large number of our graduates were the first woman to join a team of software developers. So many of them were the first. Now that actually only happens very rarely because most of, of, of the companies come back and rehire. So now many of the recruiters that we have in our events are our own alumni, you know, that joined the company, started growing, and they come back. So I think it's this, this virtuous cycle um, where if you make sure that you start having a solid pipeline of diverse talent with time, that really changes those teams and those companies for the better. This is fantastic and uh, really great to hear that you have those long-standing relationships and now that you know, your graduates are really the hiring managers. This is, this is fantastic. And, and, the, and you know, we, we've been talking a lot over the years about how we can do, like, give an opportunity to uh, more women, right? What's like, how to scale while not losing this very, um, uh, very nuanced and, and detailed, you know, approach that you, that you have to each of your students and how uh, it is very critical that uh, they feel a part of community and that there is this attention on them. Uh, but then we know that the need is immense. And right now in COVID with millions of people who are out of jobs, how can we scale the programs? So maybe if we pivot to that and the world right now, do you see, apart from the challenges, any opportunities because of, because of the pandemic? Yes, this is this is the, the question that I, I go to bed with every night. You no, know? how do we scale our work? Because I think it's a really powerful solution, but it's 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 challenging to scale. I I I, I wish we would reach thousands of women a, a year with our bootcamp. Um, but interestingly, interestingly enough, I think COVID has opened a, a number of new opportunities. So we went remote when the pandemic began. It was challenging at the beginning, but a few months into it, we said, okay, you know what? We've learned so much. We're seeing opportunities arise. We should just stay like this. And, and, and I mean, instead of holding to, oh, as, as soon as we can go back, we'll go back. Let's just take the opportunity to transform ourselves too. Um, and, and we've done that. So now we're gonna stay remote. And first impact that we're seeing, for example, our centers, uh, our physical centers were in the capital cities, you know, that's where you get most of the demand for tech jobs. So that was a limitation in terms of how many women we could reach uh, or from where they were coming. Now that's no longer the case. Now we've opened our call for, app our call for applicants to say anyone in the country can apply to Laboratoria. No? So now we have students from much more remote areas where there's less opportunity also benefiting from this. And many of them will probably be able to work remote as, as many of the jobs will continue to be remote, I think, for the long run. And um, so that's one thing in, the, in, in how we structure our team. I think we've also gained some important efficiencies. Uh, and also we're starting to see what new opportunities uh, arise. So, for example, we have 
thousands of women that apply to laboratoria every single year and they, they don't get in because we have a limited capacity of students that we can serve. And we've always been thinking, what can we do with them? No, and, and I think now one of our important priorities is the, the question, at least the guiding question is, can we design a lighter touch version of this bootcamp that can help increase the employability of these almost 20,000 women that have an interest in laboratoria yearly? Um, and we'll see. So I think it, it obviously won't be as intense as the bootcamp. We might not be able to say, yes, 80% chance that you're gonna get a job that triples your income after this experience. But I think we can do a lot to give these women more skills so that they can become uh, more empowered on their own journey of, of skilling and looking for better job opportunities. Um, so those are some new new horizons that we're going to start exploring soon. Actually, that leads me to another question that I had. As you are doing a lot of thinking around the opportunity right now, you must be also thinking about what careers your graduates will have going forward and what does it mean uh, from a learning perspective. They, you already taught your students that you can learn new skills at any point in life and then find a job that fits your skill set and your in overall predispositions. What's, what do you see? How do you see the future jobs are going to, you know, be impacted by automation, by technology? And uh, what do you, do you think, do you feel strongly that uh, your students will be able to uh, keep up with this pace of change? Yes, so actually that's that's one of, one of the things why I, I really love our, our, our bootcamp because it, it really instills this lifelong learning mindset in our students and this sense of being the owner of your own learning journey. And I think that's really the most powerful thing we can do to, to prepare students for a world of work that's constantly changing. You know, as, as we see our alumni, and now we see that they're on their second, third job, they, they go through a JavaScript program, but two years down the line, many of them are doing iOS software development or, or anything else in the world of software. So there really is this mindset that empowers them. And then I, feel, I think today more than ever with COVID, it's crucial that we build a growth mindset, a lifelong learning mindset, uh, and the community and the support network that young people need to face a world of work that will only continue to change. I think it's a perfect note to also finish our conversation today. And I really appreciate all your inputs from our perspective as we watch Laboratoria and other organizations that we have supported. It's really impressive how agile your organizations have been through the pandemic, but also before how you constantly place uh, the needs uh, of your students at the center, but you also work super closely with employers. And I think this is the critical intersection of understanding the skills that your students need to get, but also the employer's needs and getting their trust. So you not only train the students, but also have already the jobs where uh, they can be you know, placed and, and successful. So uh, my wish would be for more of, more of laboratories happening globally so we can really uh, give access to this opportunity to so many uh, talented uh, young people globally. Thank you so much, Mariana, for your time today. Uh, thank you, Carolina. That's an amazing wish. I love it. And, and thank you for, for your continued support as, as a funder. I think that's what us social entrepreneurs need. So thank you so much for that. And it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Carolina and Mariana, for incredible examples of how to upskill the, the global workforce and those very interesting perspectives, your very different perspectives from the grantee uh, perspective and from the funder perspective and how you have adapted to COVID. I really enjoyed uh, you, you both uh, sharing your experiences um, and, you know, learning how all of us are adapting to uh, these very challenging times. And, to COVID-19. Also, uh, thank you so much um, for being examples of powerful women that are leading the way of sustainable development. Very proud of you. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time from your busy agendas to join us today.